Our gospel lesson is found in the book of Matthew. I'll be reading the first 10 verses, beginning with verse 1. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance, his appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. So, Christ is risen. risen <laughs> what a glorious day this is when churches all around the world gather to celebrate our Savior who once was dead but now is alive. Christ is the source of the church's ancient hope, a hope that has carried the followers of Jesus down through the ages and has enabled them and us to persevere and to hold on to God through hardships and challenges and trials and persecutions. This ancient hope propelled missionaries to go and serve among people whose lives were so different from anything they knew just so that they could share the good news of Jesus with others. This ancient hope, this hope that is ours is, is grounded in the truth that the same God who raised Jesus to new life makes new life possible for all of us. I want to share a story with you. Back in the 1980s, there was a church in the city that our, of our denomination that our denomination had decided they wanted to close and they were thinking about whether to do so or not. It was pretty much on life support and many had already considered it dead. But as a last ditch effort, they decided to call a new minister to come and see what he could do with this church. And the minister is a friend of mine named Gordon Drott. Gordon tells this wonderful story of his first Sunday worshiping with the church in a sanctuary that could seat a little more than 300 people. There were only 15 in worship that morning. And the majority of those people were not in the pews. They were sitting in the choir loft. You see, this church had an endowment fund specifically set aside for the singers and the organists. And so the majority of people he looked at were probably you could count on one hand. Nothing prepared Gordon for the stark reality that confronted him that morning. He looked out and he saw death staring him in the face and he wondered to himself, what was I thinking, uprooting my family and bringing them here? 
knew that while some had called him to do a new thing, there were others sitting on the sideline kind of taking bets, wondering how long it would be before he would give in and close the church. He said he went through the motions of worship that morning, but he couldn't quite wait till the last person left so he could close the door and have a good cry. And then he locked up the building, went across the street, and sat down with God on the city sidewalk, just looking at the church. He stayed there for quite a long time. And then something interesting happened. He said he began to see doors appear on the facade of the church. And on each door, there were different labels. One label said children. Another said dancer. Another said AIDS. Another said actor. Another said AA. And it just went on and on. And the more he looked, the more doors kept appearing, the more labels kept showing up. And then he realized that his calling to this church and the mission of this church was to open each door and to welcome the people who were behind them in. When I heard this story or thought about it, it reminded me of the story from the Gospel of Matthew that I read where the angel of the Lord comes to the tomb and the angel rolls back the stone so that Mary Magdalene and Mary could go in and see for themselves that Jesus was no longer there but was among the living. Gordon began to open the doors that he saw and began to invite those behind it to come in and to see that the Lord was indeed alive and that they were welcome to come and experience that new life for themselves. Ten years later, I was hired to work at this church, which had become a thriving healing, life-giving faith community full of life and hope and love. It will always be, for me, a testimony to the power of God who is able to raise new life out of dead places. That is the hope that we carry. That is the Easter hope. That is that ancient hope that is ours that we hold on to. This ancient hope in our risen Savior is why we can face the challenges in our own lives today. It is why we are encouraged to stand on the promises of God, no matter what, especially when confronted by the fears and the lies of the evil one that is all around us all of the time. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Therefore, we are not alone because he lives. We are not forsaken because he is with us. And because Christ lives, we who die in him shall be raised to new life with him. For in Christ the grave has lost its sting and death its victory. They shall never have the last word, ever. For just as the tomb appeared to be the end to the disciples, to Jesus, or for Jesus, we know because of God and what God has done in Christ that that day was not the end, but it was the beginning. The beginning of a story of God who did not run from or skirt around or cover over our suffering, but entered the tombs of our lives and breathed new life into it. Through Christ, 
Our sins were forgiven, not our for sins were forgiven on the cross, and we were given a, a hope that has stood the test of time, a hope of new life. Live today, right here, right among us, and a hope of eternal life. Live with God and the saints of glory forever. And so, my beloved friends, let us not leave the same as we entered in this morning. But may we carry this ancient hope of ours. For we know, we know that Christ is risen. Amen. Let us pray together. Gracious and eternal God, indeed, we celebrate the risen Savior who has set us free. It is truly by your power and your grace and your mercy that you enable that new life to rise up within us, that we in him might see possibilities, that we might know that new life is possible and that we might rejoice in this life that you have prepared for us. And so bless us, O oh God. Bless us that we will leave from here as Easter people celebrating this gift of life that we have in you. And may we share that with others, that they too might come to rejoice and to know for themselves that Jesus is alive and that hope continues to live in him. We pray this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen.